Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in today's vlog you will see my interview with Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar about the Dance to Trance classic Power of American Natives. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, my interview with Jam Elmar about Power of American Natives. Enjoy! Dance to Trance was a project from Rolf Elmer aka Jam Elmar together with DJ Dark. In the year 1990 the very first ever Dance to Trance record got released. A two track vinyl with the song Dance to Trance on side A and on the B side We Came in Peace. The big commercial breakthrough for Dance to Trance came two years later with their track Power of American Natives for which they worked together with singer Linda Rocco. It became a top 10 hit in countries such as Germany, the Netherlands, Norway and Austria. For this week's vlog I sat down with Jamal Mar in his studio to ask him about the story behind Power of American Natives and more. My first question was how he and DJ Doc got to meet each other. I met him in my studio which was in the cellar of my parents house uh, and uh, yeah we will making hell of a noise you know i had already um, this uh, system 700 and a few samplers and uh, drum computers and um, but uh, we met through a guy his name is heinz roth which was also the label manager of um, iq iq exactly and um, at that time we wanted to make a or oh, some people from from record company from CBS and Heinz Roth they had a, the idea to make a dance musical. They wanted to wanted to compose a musical that was you know was supposed to put on stage and you know played all over the world and you know and then so he, he was trying to connect some people and I was connected to Dark and uh, so that was a very good connection because uh, we did some some cool tracks together but this is how it started so he, one day he came just to my studio and said oh i'm, I'm dark you know oh i'm rolf and let's go <laughs> <laughs> let's make some music <laughs> so uh, this year it's exactly 30 years ago since the very first uh, dance to trance release dance to trance release came out uh, a record with the tracks dance to trance and we came in peace so i'm curious if you still uh, re remember this one <laughs> oh this is uh this is a very special one because this cover is um, very rare. This is very rare because uh, usually we have this other cover with, um, um, I don't know, uh, actually with the astronaut mm -hmm. on it. So I think this is the, uh, I think this is the promo. Yeah, the promo. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, this is typical Tala back at that time, you know. Um, this was is a true. 80s um, image, I would say. You mm -hmm. know, the guy with you know looks a little bit like um, Soviet propaganda, <laughs> whatever. You know, with man with a with a sledgehammer and mm -hmm. you know, uh, we are working on it and you know make it happen. <laughs> so yeah, this is typical Tala uh, Tala design back at that time. Oh. Great. I mean, uh, I I think uh, from back in the days, I've never seen this cover again. Oh well, well, good. Well. <laughs> Well, I'm glad I have it done. Yeah. So, um, how are the reactions uh, on the first release? Good, uh, good. Um, it was actually my first time when I uh, when I was allowed to enter <laughs> the holy grail of uh, Dorian Gray back at that time. Uh, it was uh, Dorian Gray, for those who don't know, it was a very famous discotheque in the cellar of the Frankfurt airport. And um, you know it was the mecca for you know and dance and club enthusiasts yeah. back at that time. And uh, we, we had a great sound system there. It was a very shallow um, roof, and so there was no really super high acoustic problems. The whole thing was just bathed into sound. It was absolutely great. And so this was also coming back to your question. Was also the first time when I heard this record be played by a DJ, and I saw the reactions. I was like, wow. And later on, I heard that uh, the guys in Goa. Um, played it all um, yeah, at their parties when the sun was rising. Oh wow! This is what I heard. I think 
Paul Oakenfold told me, if I'm not mistaken. But um, he said, you know, every time you know they they have their parties and the sun is going up in the morning, they play "We Came in Peace," which is of course fantastic. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So uh, after some releases such as uh, Where Is Dag, Let's Get Rolling and uh, Hello San Francisco, you guys released The Power of American Natives, which came out in the year 1992. Yeah. Uh, the vocals on the track are done by uh, Linda Rocco. Um, hmm. How did you get to meet Linda? Linda um, is still living in Frankfurt and she's a fantastic singer. I met her a few weeks ago when we did some songwriting and um, I met her in the 80s when they made a, her personal album, when they recorded her album. And what, this was actually the first um, studio experience for myself. It was a studio that was like in, at, the, at, you know, at the border of Frankfurt, you know, at the lim city limits of Frankfurt and um, a nice studio where they recorded and, and I already had like a sampler which was quite rare back at that time so I um, and played. expensive <laughs> yeah very expensive it was uh, thanks to my father um, he, he supported me and um, I had to pay back but he gave me the money to <laughs> afford it so um, yeah I was one of the rare guys who had a sampler like this and this is how I met, I met Linda and um, I don't know, 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so was it the plan from the start already to make uh, Power of American Natives uh, a vocal track? Um, no, it actually it existed as a it actually existed as an instrumental track before. Uh, just with a with a pan flute, you know, with, with that came out of a um, wave station, mm -hmm. rock wave station. And um, but then the record company said you know guys, we paid you, you so much money for this uh, LP, we need a hit. And uh, then of course we said, okay, what the, there's a lot of hits already. Now a hit has vocals. Okay, vocals. Well, we can talk something. No, no, we need a singer. And so I remembered Linda and uh, we invited her to the studio and um, I had this idea of this line because of um, Everybody's free. Um, Rosella. Every, yeah, Rosella. You know, that high note, that long high note. And I thought uh, something like this could easily happen on this track too. And I think this is cool. And so I, I had this um, idea of the melody and um, Linda had this idea of this um, talking, this kind of rap thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a real rap, it's like more like a rhythmical talk. and. Uh, yeah, and uh, that was, um, we recorded it and uh, yeah, Linda was absolutely brilliant on this. Like a, really like a rock voice, yeah. edgy and powerful. And uh, also because in the other interview of Jam and Spoon, you were, named, you were mentioning Top of the Pops and uh, yeah, we were doing po Top of the Pops as well in the UK with uh, Dance to Trance. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. So uh, is there like a story behind the lyrics? Yes, of course, um, because um, Dark at that time, I think he still does, but he's very, he was very, very much interested and uh, into Indian, northern Indian culture. So uh, he was very much into all this that had anything to do with the, with the American um, origins, uh, or, or, or how do you say this? Uh, the original people from America. Yeah, yeah, yeah also the uh, Ureinwohner, I don't yeah. know. Uh, well, the Indian, North American Indian. Yeah. And he, uh, he was very much into this culture, very much interested. And, um, you know, from the cover from the LP, you can easily mm -hmm. trace a lot of little items, you know, that would uh, clearly um, point to his interest of yeah. this culture and so we we said let's do something because you're yeah you know, you're so much into this and why not picking this uh, up and uh, then we came up with the, I believe in the power of American natives and so I think this is um, yeah was just a consequence of yeah. his interest. So you guys wrote the track uh, like the lyrics together? Yeah, I think I, I can't really remember how it was, but um, yeah, something like this. We, we went to the studio and we didn't have anything. And uh, I just had this 
very um, blurry idea of this Rosella thing and I thought let's do something with a long high note that was on an E mm -hmm. because that would sound yeah. powerful and uh, then I believe I believe in the power of Indian uh, American uh, American native all of a sudden and then we you know it's just just like uh, throwing mar play, playing marbles or throwing the the dice mm -hmm. somehow you know it fits yeah. uh, at one point and then you have the idea so do you still remember <laughs> something from the from the production of the track mm, yeah i, th I think uh, I clearly can remember how we discovered the melody uh, with a with a flute uh, because we had the playback and we that little extra thing was missing. It's like I I, I I don't know many producers who are watching will probably know this situation very well that you have everything but this one thing is still missing that you have to find and you search for hours and hours days and days sometimes weeks to get this right and here in this case it was just only a day but when you have something that is very good sounding already in the morning and in the evening you are just completely you know puzzled and you don't know what to do to find that little extra thing so I was I clearly remember when um, I was at the Cork Wave Station, which was like a keyboard like this or this, you know, and then you, you have like um, like a button where you can step through the presets. You go like ping, ping, dong, ding, dong, 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 and uh, you know just very like uh, verzweifelt I don't know how this uh, like okay we have to find this mm -hmm. and I was going like, uh, 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 going through the presets and all of a sudden it was like boom this pan flute with this reverb I was like oh wow this is great and I was looking at Doug and he said yeah yeah, yeah let's go for this let's go for this and so we um, played the melody we, we put it together and then there was this, this melody so it was one of those things where you had really to suffer to find the right <laughs> thing you know that was missing in, yeah. in the track I'm sure there are a lot of producers uh, know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about <laughs> so after you found the pan flute the track was done like pretty quickly I guess yes yes, yes. okay right. so um, after the release, the track became a big hit. It reached the top 10 here in Germany, plus in countries such as Finland, Norway and the Netherlands, it even became a top 5 hit. Um, did you expect the track to be this successful? Um, no, not really. I mean, you, re you release a record and then um, there's nothing you can really do about it mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, you can do a bit of promotion and stuff like this, but actually, at the end of the day, the music has to work um, itself, yeah. by, by itself, and the track has to be good. I mean, you can do a lot of promo and spend a lot of money on videos and whatever, but if the track is weak or is leaking something, then it will yeah. not take off, you yeah. know. And um, so you really have to have a strong belief in when you release a track that it's good. And then um, we released the track, and um, yeah, the A and R guy from the record company was very uh, was had high hopes that it would like be strong. And all of a sudden, you know, you get the DJ feedback, you get you know the sales are going up, you know, and you think, oh wow, this could be maybe something. And um, yeah, it was my first. Hour. It was our first golden record yeah. you know 250,000 uh, sold oh wow <laughs> and I guess also the first time you had a top 10 hit in Germany that's right yeah and um, yeah I mean back at that time you know, we were just newcomers you know and we're just making music and you know we're never really thinking about success or like all this what was coming along mm -hmm. with it but all of a sudden you, you think your uh, record goes top 10 and you go like oh amazing yeah. you know everybody yeah sometimes I remember when I was at the um, uh, subway uh, Frankfurt subway I could some I, I was waiting for the train and uh, next to me were some teenagers and and they were all of a sudden they were singing I believe in the power of America and I was like oh, wow, what's going on <laughs> this is strange like un unreal yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, during the years the track has been remixed by people such as DJ Quicksilver, Scott Project, uh, Jerry Ropero, Marcus Schulz, and of course you did a Jam and Spoon remix as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you have to pick one favorite version, which would that be? No, oh, I don't know. I think uh, all versions are, are 
very well crafted and uh, and great for itself. I mean, there's not, not, not I don't really have a yeah. favorite version yeah. to be honest. I mean, the original uh, one. <laughs> the original one, yeah. Well, but um, the, the the talking about the remixes, I think uh, everyone tried to make reinterpretate the the song or the, the track in his own style, and mm -hmm. I think all of them are just made well, crafted very well. I think. Yeah. Okay, you already mentioned it before, but uh, I saw that in the beginning of August you were actually in the studio with uh, Linda Rocco. Mm -hmm. uh, is there something special in the works uh, with her? Uh, well, uh, I think we were just um, doing some songwriting, you know, yeah. nothing really that is hot at the moment, but mm, maybe it will. Yeah. You know, we were just, uh, we're, from time to time we were just uh, putting down some ideas and send it to people who are looking for songs. You know, especially in this time where you don't have to, where we where we don't have any uh, geeks yeah. as a DJ. You know, you probably start like making just making music. Yeah. You know, because you can't travel and you can't play. Yeah. So we say, oh, come on, let's let's do a track. Yeah. <laughs> so so I guess you spend a lot more time in the studio now, right? Actually, n not really more than before. Okay. To be honest. Yeah. 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 During the weeks, anyway, you don't travel. Uh, at least I don't travel. You know, in, uh, during the weekends, sometimes I have gigs. You know, festivals or club gigs and stuff. But um, during the weeks, I'm uh, I'm always here. You're always here. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, back to dance with trance. Like you guys made an album in 1992 called uh, Moon Spirits, which was like a combination of trance and uh, ambient tracks. Uh, how was it to work on that album? Actually, this album ha happened really quickly. I think it was like two weeks, and the album was uh, two weeks. Re yeah, or something. <laughs> you know, it was really, you know, uh, and um, we recorded something from from uh, the radio. I think the radio is still um, there in the in the drawer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and, uh, this uh, was a quite easy job. You know, there was no. Um, there was no, we didn't had to deal with oh this is too much trance this is too much techno this is too much whatever you know style and we didn't have this all these mind things going on you know if we do this then it's not going to be played by him or her or you know you know we we just didn't care about this yeah. we just making we were just making tracks making music you know yeah. and enjoy yeah how, enjoy it, how make, it should be yeah how it should be today when i do a track it's always like okay if i do a little bit of this then people can't identify because it's too much trance and if i do this the trans people would not like it because it's too much techno and you know you have these things you don't want want to think about all this yeah. you just want to make music but they they naturally you know this is uh, i think the natural uh, the natural function of the mind that uh, you get bombarded by all these doubts and you know what if I do yeah. this and that you know yeah. and but but when we did the album it was just oh come on let's make a track and blah, 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 yeah. Yeah. let's make another track another one <laughs> yeah, and yeah. in two weeks it was done yeah. wow so uh, in 1995 you guys released another album called Revival and in the same year uh, the Dance to Trans project ended um, why did you guys decide to split up? Oh, I think it was just because style-wise, I wanted to go into a different direction than him, and uh, also he wanted he was preferring some uh, musical ideas that I that didn't touch me. Yeah. So there was no big drama. Actually, it was just a musical uh, yeah. idea, you know. That he he wanted to is doing his own stuff in his own style, and the style wasn't really me. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, and you were already busy with Jam and Spoon then? Yes, of course, and with Storm and, yeah. and st other stuff. And yeah. So uh, it was, uh, it's not a big deal, you know. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's a bit sad, of course, because we had a lot of success. But um, this is a good example also when the success becomes too heavy on your shoulders. Yeah. Because um, once you have a big hit, your innocence is somehow is uh, somehow uh, evaporated, yeah. gone, you yeah. know? You think, you start thinking about, okay, we had this, and we, the track worked with that sounds, and this uh, chemistry, and uh, we have to do it again, but we do it again, people will say, oh, they're just repeating themselves, mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a lot of things going on, and, and it has to be success, uh, successful as the first record, at least. Yeah. And uh, everybody knows that the 
um, be, uh, the record behind the first success is much more difficult than the first yeah. one and uh, so it you know uh, uh, and then there was money involved they said you know we pay you all these advances and we want um, we want to have success you know we just gave you we didn't gave you the money for just hanging around we want to have like uh, you know mm -hmm. follow-ups you yeah. know that works as well and and of course the motivation is of course to be successful which is not bad you know it's it's just the way this business works but you know we as you know young kids we were just uh, thinking about you know making music and you know not not really being focused on success no success, exactly. success yeah, you know yeah. we just we just wanted to make music and so um i think also this um this pressure this constant pressure to deliver a uh, hit after one hit after the other yeah. i think that really um took off the the magic of of the work uh, the collaboration mm -hmm. with dj Dom. yeah fair enough yeah, yeah. Um, so if you think back about uh, those days with Dance to Trends, uh, what would be your favorite memory of the project? I think my favorite memory would be that uh, when we, when I got my first fucking golden record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was something, I mean, it. at the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything, you know, it just means that uh, you have been successful. But it's like uh, for maybe like a sportsman who uh, takes part of the Olympic Games and mm -hmm. get, gets a golden medal, you know metal and yeah, the, the recognition yeah it's it's uh, it said okay you have done well yeah, guys. yeah you know and i think the track is still cool i think and uh, there have uh, there has been a, a very yeah, um, very famous sound actually in it and um, i think i don't know how many thousand times it was sampled by uh, producers and and you know DJ guys and it was actually done by uh, also with this guy here you know it was with this filter with oscillated filters that it was um, you know modulated by an envelope generators and this is was the bass drum this kick drum that w was like hammering so hard and I think this this sound was absolutely unique mm -hmm. and uh, this was sampled by i don't know how many thousands of <laughs> pro productions <laughs> so um even apart from the success of this record it was nice uh, to uh, that i was uh, capable to make a sound that was um somehow became a classic yeah back at that time, yeah the impact you know? that it made yeah and you know it was it still sounds funny and um outstanding yeah. for, a, for a kick drum yeah you know? So um, there have been some new remixes lately of tracks from the Jam and Spoon project and also the project Storm. We already spoke about that like in the previous interview. Uh, can we expect new remixes of some of the Dance to Trans classics as well? Yes, yes. Um, well, we don't have anything in the pipeline, but uh, sooner or later always we get requests. Can we do this remix and can we do that? And I'm sure that Power of American Natives will be remixed in the future maybe by someone, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, there's no, nothing really planned at the moment, to be honest, but um, I hope so soon, yes. That's actually a good idea. I could, yeah. I could well, pick up well, this you're, idea. You're welcome. And, yeah. <laughs> and maybe you can make like a Jamal Moore remix of it. Yeah, 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 that's good. Okay. I never I never remixed this track by myself. Yeah, see, yeah. well, th there we go. <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. All right, that was it, this week's vlog. My interview with Rolf Elmer, aka Jam Almar, about the story behind Power of American Natives by Dance to Trance. Rolf, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. I did two more interviews with Rolf. Uh, the first one is online already, so you can already uh, see that one on my channel. Uh, in that one he talks about Stella, the big classic by Jam and Spoon. And I did an interview with him about Storm by Storm and that one should be online in a couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.